This is an experiment uh, with screen recording where I'll talk about geometric algebra or Clifford algebra, uh, GA for short. So the basic idea of geometric algebra is that we can multiply vectors. Now, in high school, you learn from your high school teacher who tells you uh, in response to your questions, can I multiply vectors? They say, no, you may not. They give you the rules for adding vectors. So we take a vector, if we want to add that to another vector, we line them up head to tail and connect tail to head, and that's our sum. We can also do this algebraically. Say one, two, three, added to two, three, four, and we get three, five, seven. That's a well-known formula. Now, what happens when we multiply vectors? We've been taught two ways of multi vec multiply vectors. One is a dot product. So we take two vectors, say x and y, and we have a somewhat multiplication-like operation, which if the two vectors are, let's say, x, y, z, and a, b, c, our dot product is x, a, plus y, b, plus z, c. We also have another multiplication-like operation, the cross product, where x crossed with y is the familiar x hat, y hat, z hat, and components in the determinant form, which is x hat times the yzbc determinant minus y hat times the xazc determinant and z hat times the xy a B determined. That's probably reasonable, f reasonably familiar to anyone who's done a basic course in linear algebra. Now, those turn out to be very special cases of vector products in geometric algebra. The, there's only a couple of rules that define how a, how vectors are multiplied in this in the the more general uh, geometric algebras, but um, let's let's talk about a couple of examples first. Suppose we have uh, some unit vectors. Let's say x hat, y hat, and z hat. So in geometric algebra, it is not uh, it's well formed to say that these are multiplied if we just put them side by side. So x hat y hat is a vector product. It's no longer a vector. It's not a scalar. Not a scalar like the dot product. Not a vector. And it is not a pseudo vector like the cross product. And similarly, we can form any number of different combinations of these. We can have x hat z hat. We can have z hat, x hat, and we can have y hat, z hat, and so forth. We can also have combinations, say 2x hat, y hat, plus 3y hat, z hat. And we can add this to a vector, and we can add this to a scalar. This in geometric algebra, oops is called a multivector.
Now we have to give a meaning still to one of these products. Uh, so in a, in a nutshell, if we have a product like x hat, y hat, we can interpret this as a representation of a unit portion of the plane. So if this is x, y, and z, then, and this is 1, 1, 1, 1, or 1, 1, 0, then this directed segment, plane segment, can be thought of as x hat, y hat. Similarly, we can have a directed portion of the z hat x hat plane. So this oriented area oops, z hat x hat can be thought of as a representation. Z hat, uh, x hat can be thought of as being represented by a unit plane area within the, the xz plane. And you could think of x hat, z hat as being represented by the opposite orientation unit area within the XZ plane. A similar errors in the you think of so if, if that is a one length vector and this is a one length vector we come around in a cycle we can think of this as the y hat, z hat, unit area. That gives us a representation, a, a geometrical uh, interpretation of a vector product. We can also form a product of three unit vectors in, the, in a 3D space. So this would be R3. And this is a representation of a unit volume element so that and but in a special sense that it has a an orientation mm -hmm. so that uh, the y hat x hat z hat would have a opposing orientation orientation so we might think of this x y z so if if there is an orientation to each face then the volume can be thought of as, as oriented you could similarly have a a spherical uh, uh, unit that has a specific surface orientation and that that could be uh, that could be thought of as a representation, a geometrical interpretation of of x hat, y hat, z hat. Uh, assigning a geometrical interpretation to a multivector, like one plus x hat plus uh, y hat, z hat plus x hat, y hat, z hat, uh, is harder, uh, but um, there are certain certain specific uh, multi-vectors that uh, end up with nice geometrical interpretations. Now, what happens if you take a, a set of uh, unit vectors and multiply them together? is 
something like this x hat times y hat times x hat times y hat times x hat what kind of, of creature is that? Does that represent a some sort of five-dimensional uh, quantity uh, or something else? Now it turns out that this particular product is going to be plus or minus x hat. You can roughly think of it as the x hats cancel and the y hats cancel and you need to make to have some care uh, and I'll, I'll specify exactly how that happens. So this is the, the only thing that will be left over. And you end up with a vector out of that product of five vectors. The specific, the specific uh, rule that allow, there's two kind of rules that, that uh, you would actually use to reduce a product like that and they have they follow from x hat y hat equals minus y hat x hat the product of any two uh, perpendicular vectors anti-commutes and one additional property which is the product of any unit vector with itself is one now, those follow from specific geometric algebra axioms, and I will uh, talk about those in a bit. But for now, it's worth understanding uh, what the, the basic operations that uh, are, are fundamental and uh, how they can be used. So, knowing that, let's just go back to this little more care and see what the so actual sign of this product will be and whether it'll be plus x or minus x hat. So x hat y hat, x hat y hat, x hat. One of the, the geometric algebra axioms is that the order of any specific multiplication doesn't matter. So if we have this specific ordering, we are now free to reverse either pair of these using this uh, anti-commutation rule. So this is the same as minus y hat x hat times x hat y hat times x hat. Uh, we can change the order, so this is going to be y hat times x hat x hat times y hat x hat. Now this x hat x hat is 1. So this is minus y hat y hat x hat, and that's 1. So the final result is that we have minus x hat x hat y hat x hat y hat x hat is minus x hat. This is a vector in disguise. That is a, a simple example of a uh, reduction, a very simple reduction of some geometric uh, vector products. Here's the axioms. One is that the product of any vector with itself equals the squared length of that vector. Now, here I've been using talking about uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional spaces. Uh, or subset subspaces and this applies to any dimensional space and in fact also applies to non-euclidean spaces with the special caveat that the length in a non-euclidean space may be positive or negative or may depend on the uh, what the vector is uh, that's 
as a useful kind of generalization for special relativity and uh, electromagnetism. Second axiom, I believe this one is called associative axiom. I can never remember all the right names for these. But basically, if we have any product of vectors, it doesn't matter what order that product is taking them. So uh, x, y, z product would be the same as x times y times z, uh, or the product of x times y times z. And if the specific grouping that's used doesn't matter, then we can drop the grouping and just say that this product exists. The last, uh, if you call it axiom, is that we can add scalars, say a scalar a plus a vector plus a bivector, a representation of a plane, let's say 3, uh, and we can also add that to a volume. And if we're in a higher dimensional space, we could add in some other uh, combination of interest. Let's say a four-dimensional volume element. So we're free to, to make any combination of scalars, vectors, bivectors, trivectors, or higher dimensional analogs. We can compute vector products in any specific any order, and if we take any vector and square it, so we can write this as the square of a vector, then that is interpreted as the squared length of that vector according to the metric that's in use for the vector space. Now let's look at some examples of how those how, how these axioms play out, and specifically how from these we end up with the rule that has been used that perpendicular vectors anti-commute and that a unit vector multiplied by itself is one. This one's probably fairly obvious, follows directly from axiom one, so product of a vector with itself is the squared length of that vector. The squared length of any unit vector is 1. Now let's see where this guy comes from. And that can be shown uh, with a simple example. Suppose we take a vector. So in this case, I have taken the vector x plus y, or x hat plus y hat. So this is x, y, z, and this is the unit length in the x direction, and that's the unit length in the y direction. Here is our x hat plus y hat. This is a length 2 vector. Ah, well, length square root 2 vector as a squared length of 2. So now if I take x hat plus y hat and compute the length of that squared that is going to be the length of x hat squared plus the length of y hat squared. This is just Pythagoras theorem. 1 plus 1 is 2. So the squared length of x hat plus y hat is 2. Now, 
using the axiom one of geometric algebra, let's also square this x hat plus y hat and see what we get. So x hat plus y hat squared is, and we have no a priority uh, knowledge that uh, any particular products of vectors commute, so we have to be careful with ordering. So expanding this out, keeping ordering intact, we have x hat times x hat. We have y hat times y hat. And we have y hat times x hat. And we have x hat times y hat. All the four possible pairs of x and y hat in this particular product. Now, this from axiom 1 is 1. y hat times y hat from axiom 1 is 1. So we are left with 1 plus 1 plus y hat x hat plus x hat y hat, which is 2 plus this symmetric sum of x hat y hat. However, we also know that x hat plus y hat squared is the length squared of x hat plus y hat, which is 2. So we have 2 equals 2 plus x hat y hat plus y hat x hat. That means this beast must be 0. If x hat y hat plus y hat x hat equals 0, we now know that y hat x hat equals minus x hat y hat. This is the anti commutation rule, per se, for perpendicular vectors. And you could construct any combination of perpendicular vectors and show that this is generally true. Now we have a, from the axioms, a justification for the rules that were used to introduce the vector products. And that is all for today.